Welcome to Spiritual Realities Podcast with your host, Dana Emanuel. Have you ever fallen prey to the most successful and cunning card artist ever to live? Ever become fascinated by the paranormal or become involved in the new age, witchcraft, or the occult? Come listen to the testimonials of people who have discovered the deceptions behind these things, have since come out of it all, and have been set free by Jesus. Okay. Welcome everyone to Spiritual Realities Podcast. I have a very interesting guest today. Her name is Stacy Jones. She is a book author. She's actually wrote several books. Uh, the book though that I want to uh, that for her to talk about is her book called Meeting at Midnight. It is her story. And it's very interesting. I really suggest people to get that book if they can. So, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and let her tell you her testimony. So I'm going to introduce you now. So Stacy, go ahead. Okay. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Dana. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Stacy Jones. I was born and raised in the Bay Area in California. I had absolutely no interest in UFOs whatsoever as a child. I was a good student, first chair clarinet, did really well in school. I was encouraged to pursue education. My parents didn't make me go to any church. We would say grace occasionally, but I wouldn't say that we were religious. I grew up in a you know, public school, secular, listened to secular music. It was pretty much a normal American kid with a normal upbringing. And yeah. I wouldn't say UFOs really came into place until much later, probably around the age of 32, which I'll get into. But I did have an experience fairly early on. I was in third grade, I believe. My teacher's name was Mrs. Jackson. <laughs> I'll never forget that name because it was an interesting experience. And we had all been singing, practicing for, I think, a school play, singing songs together. And I had something happen that I wrote about in my diary. I was, I've always loved writing. I think since the age of six, <laughs> I would write little tiny books. I started writing early. It was just a way that I would express myself. And I remember when I got home that day, I write, wrote something weird happened in Mrs. Jackson's class today. And I drew a picture of a rectangle with little words traveling around it that said no place like home. I had not seen the Wizard of Oz <laughs> at that time. Wow. But what had happened that day is I didn't know how to describe it back then. I just thought maybe this is something that happened to other people. I saw what's best described as a screen, like a rectangle with the words no place like home rotating around it uh, clockwise. And this is important because later it influenced how I perceived an event that happened later on. So I'll cut to after high school, went to college, you know, state university, met my husband and his family was from Texas. So we decided we'd move over to Texas. Um, I, we were married on the 15th. I had my birthday, I think 25th birthday on the 16th. And then we moved over to Texas. I think I loaded up my car and just whatever could fit in there is what I took. Yeah. So we moved into our little apartment next to a nature preserve and cut to a couple of years later, I already had my job established. So I think I was hired within a couple of weeks of moving here. I taught middle school in California, math and science, middle school level, and then moved here. And my certificate, I had to get recertified during the summer, but that happened pretty easily. And I started teaching um, school while I was here. But I also, a couple of years later, had two children. And this is where it started to get really interesting. When my kids were about two years old, I want to say young toddlers, I had a girl who's older a boy who's a little one year, 14 months younger than she is, I believe. We were in the car one night, headed back home. It was around Thanksgiving. I did not drink alcohol till mm -hmm. way after this event happened. I, I wasn't into alcohol. It's not something I enjoyed. My dad had tried to give me a little sip of beer at a party once because <laughs> mm -hmm. they went to parties like regular people and said, I'm going to let yeah. you have a sip so you won't ever want this when you're older. And I hated it. It was gross. Yeah. Then when I turned 21, mom said, here's a wine cooler. You can see what it tastes like. I tasted it and thought that's disgusting. I don't want any. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't tempted by alcohol. So yeah. we can't say that alcohol had any, had any part in what I saw. I was fully conscious driving home with the kids. And suddenly I spotted what looked like eight white orbs in the sky. Now, mind you, I had taught science, so I knew what it couldn't be. I knew it wasn't an airplane. These were unlike anything I'd ever seen. They moved very organically, almost like a flock of birds would move. They yeah. merged together into a pink disc. Now, I'm the type who is very Ooh. curious. I've always been curious. I look into things. If my husband had seen something like this, he'd just keep driving. <laughs> we already yeah. we had that conversation. He said, I wouldn't care. 
UFOs are, you know, fiction. I just keep driving, wouldn't care about it. So I'm yeah. the opposite. I thought I'm going to follow this thing. Yes, it's getting a little late. So I'm just a lot of people were <laughs> running the other direction. Exactly. Well, that's what that's the thing I talk to people about. They'll say, "Weren't you afraid there could be aliens?" Yeah. I didn't have that preconditioning. I didn't watch alien movies. I think I'd seen that's APT, cool. but I didn't even think, "Oh, you know, it's aliens." I just thought it's something yeah. up there I've never seen. So yeah. I drove up closer to it, noticed that it merged into a pink disc that was swimming with color. Wow! And this was not far off. This was maybe I don't want to. I'm trying to gauge the distance here, but it wasn't even as high as an airplane would be. We're talking where if you looked up three stories, four stories, a couple stories high where I could study it. I could stare yeah. it. I got right under it. When I was pulling up, I rolled down the window and just jokingly shouted, there's a UFO. I was in a movie theater parking lot and there were people walking. I remember a group of kids walking that had gowns on. I thought maybe they were coming from a dance or something. And there was a gentleman in a long trench coat. He was looking up. It didn't dawn on me to go talk to him. If I could go back in time, I probably would have went up to him and said, hey, do you see that? Taking out the phone. I had a flip phone back then, um, not an mm -hmm. iPhone. But I drove right up under it and just sat and stared. And the first thing that struck me was, wow, this thing seems intelligent. Just because mm -hmm. it's, it's floating there, it, it couldn't be a hologram. It couldn't be holographic. It's literally swimming with color. It, it seemed alive. Pink yeah. fire, like pink fire, electricity going through it. There was a green perimeter that kind of went around, almost like when you turn on a Windows desktop and you see oh, a wow. little icon dance around. Yeah. Semi transparent. You could sort of see the night sky through it. It okay, wasn't a cloudy night. Something? Sure. Now, at this point in time, uh, while you're looking at, you're trying to rationalize, you know, you're a teacher too at the time. So, I mean, you, you know, to rationalize things, but right. you're looking at it and now you're trying to think what it is. So, I find it interesting. A lot of people at this point, they're looking at, they'd be like, that's a UFO. <laughs> I don't know that, you know, but it don't sound like you was hyped up hoping it was a UFO or trying to get carried away with a moment thinking, you know, trying to sensationalize this event. You were trying to rationalize it. Right. Which I'm is good. Friend. That's good you was doing There that. was nothing in my schema, nothing in my background knowledge that this could fit into. Yeah. So I just sat there and stared at it. I'm very reflective anyhow. My daughter says, Mom, you're yeah. staring. I mean, I'll sit there and think about things with my jaw to drop wide, just considering different things I've seen sometimes. But I stared <laughs> at it and I just started thinking, yeah. what could this, what is it? It's alive. What is it? And my son, who, what well, I could get the ages of, was maybe one and a couple months, he said, a ship. He's a little oh. one in the back seat. Daughter was asleep. So I thought, I've got to go tell my husband about this. I want him to see it. I want other people that I know to see this so that they can see what I'm seeing because I've never seen it. A well, fire you're not going to believe me. I've got to show this. Yeah. Right. So I, I didn't break the speed limit, but I did drive home pretty fast. I only lived a couple minutes from the movie theater. And uh, my brother was there with us at the time. And I said, I have to come see this. There's something weird. It's like a UFO. It's in the sky. They jumped in the car because, of course, they're like, really? <laughs> And they went with me by that time it was gone. And I'd watched it for a few minutes. And every time I think about it, I wonder why didn't I go back? But the interesting part is the effects of it. If I'd just seen it once, that would be, okay, I saw something weird. I might research it a little when I get home because I'm curious, have other people seen this? And I did research, but yeah. I saw more of them after that. That was 2008, November 29th, 2008. And I remember too, when I got back with my husband and brother, the first thing I did is I got on the phone and I called the police department and I said, I just want to let you guys know there's something going on. Was there something spotted? Blah, blah, blah. And they said, no, ma'am, but you can call this number. They gave me the number to New Fork. I think it was the National UFO Reporting Center, something. Oh, I wonder if they're um, related to New Fork. I'm not sure. It was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. My memory is horrible. Think, Anyhow, but it's like a national. Well, yeah, they are because, right. you know, Joe is uh, uh, he's uh, part of the one in um Korea and then also the Philippines, I think. So okay. I know they have them everywhere. So right, maybe. they're pretty. Mufon's definitely the reigning, you know, the one that people are yeah. knowledgeable about. But at that time, that's who I was told to call. I knew nothing about any yeah. of it. So I remember typing up. I don't know if they told me to write it up, but I wrote up a little paragraph about what I saw, and I didn't stop there. After that was done and I submitted it, I went online and started researching whether other people had seen it. Has anyone seen? But because there were blogs back then, I don't think. Was there a Facebook back then in 2008? Probably I, had MySpace. I don't know. I, I joined MySpace. Facebook late. MySpace was probably there, but yeah. I wasn't too much into social media at that time, being oh, a mom oh. and teaching at the same time. I was just too busy yeah. for all that. I might have had a MySpace yeah. account before I had kids, but I didn't do the social media thing. I just looked up people. And there was a woman online that I met who said she saw something in the same location. She's oh. a photographer. Um, and oh. I basically 
started to connect with people who had seen things. And I wanted to know what their experience was like because my experiences were, I needed some validation. Like I know other people have got to be seeing this stuff. I want to see what other people are saying. I needed someone because my family wasn't going to say, hey, yeah, you saw a UFO. My husband said, I forget about it. You can't understand it. Just forget about it. So uh, the dangerous part was when I researched, I noticed my research took me into some areas that were completely against what I knew to be truth. A lot of it went into the occult. There were links to ghosts, angel numbers, literally everything that it leads you into is new age. It leads you on a search into the new age. But to add a little more spice to the, you know, how I interpret all this, because I was a little confused. I thought I know it was not normal what I saw. I put it in the category of supernatural, not because, not because it's the only thing that I could think of. It's because of the way it and the other ones moved. I was in my backyard with my daughter several years later. And it didn't seem normal. So it was paranormal. You know, it was was completely abnormal. Right. And the way that they could come in and out. And since I'd seen them close up, I was not going to hear anything other than this is something from outside our dimension or something that's in our dimension that's coming in. And my daughter and I were out in the backyard. And this was when she was a little older. I prayed, you know, God, would you please let her see something from the supernatural realm so that she can know the the reality. Sure. Let me ask you a question there, because the first thing I'm thinking of is, um, okay, before you actually had your first experience, was that what you just said? Was that before or after when you actually asked that? When I asked that, let her see something supernatural was yes. after. That's after oh, okay. I'd seen tons of them. Okay. I, wanted her to, I wanted her to see something from the supernatural. Room. I think we'd been having a spiritual yeah. conversation. Yeah. I thought it'd be nice for her to have some validating experiences too. I to see, see what things you mean, that are, though, yes. So I didn't have any malintention. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But yes, as soon definitely. as we finish the prayer, as soon as I finish, you know, then let her see something in Jesus' name. We open our eyes and there's a pink orb that just popped up. Wow. Right yeah, above our heads. Awesome. And we were both excited, screaming, <laughs> excited. Oh my gosh, it worked. And sure. um, not only that, but I've had many experiences, probably from the age of 19 up, where I'd have sleep paralysis, which at that time I thought was just physical. Uh, how, I still. How old was you when you had the first sighting again? The first About? sighting? Let me think. This was after 2008. I'm gonna have to do the math. Let's see. <laughs> Go back. Okay. So it, it was. I was in my 30s. After... I was in my 30s when I had the first UFO sighting. Oh, 32, so you had I paralysis and things before. Before that, I'd had instances. Not, con- not every night, but I remember having instances yeah. where you know you see the black shadowy beings. Yeah. One came up and tried to choke me. I remember I could feel the you know, heat leaving my body. I was beginning yeah. to get cold. I thought if it gets to my head, I'm dead. Wow. Uh, but I had a strategy. I tried on it, which I'll get into. So yes, to complicate yes. matters, um, when I was a teen, like I said, my parents didn't ever take me to a church, but I had neighbors who were believers. And they would invite me to go with them. Uh, and they went to a place of worship that was pretty small. It wasn't a big mega church. This was a small gathering of believers, but they were very into things that some denominations we have nowadays would say have seized. <laughs> Miracles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they, they're anything in the book of Acts, they pretty much said could happen. But yeah. the leader of the congregation told me, I think I was around 15, you know, that I was a curious type. So I asked him, you know, what is the purpose of this place? What, it, what do you guys want to teach? And he said, we're trying to lead people to Christ. That's all we're doing. So those mm-hmm. words kind of stuck with me. But they yeah. had someone visiting. And I remember he was what they called a prophet. He had the gift of prophecy. At that time, I thought, okay, maybe that exists. We'll just sit down and hear what the guy has to say. So there's this group of less than 50 people. And he pointed me out and said, you young lady, stand up. So I'm thinking, you know, this is interesting. Hey, (laughs) I'm a teacher. This is exciting. Maybe he's going to have something interesting to say to me. At the same time, there were TV shows like Sylvia Brown, The Psychic, which I thought were all hogwash. I thought, okay, this is going to be him trying to guess. And he started asking questions about a person. He asked me who is, and he named a person. I didn't really know who that person was, but we'll put it this way. I don't want to give too much information about the person's real name because this person is still alive. Um, A couple of years later, I met this person. This is when I'm a teen. Maybe I was 17 at that time. One of the boys that I was dating, my parents told me I couldn't really date till I was 18, but we had, you know, boys in the neighborhood. One of the boys that had moved into town, we were kind of informally dating and he referred to himself as that name that the prophet had said. And I never talked to him about that at now, all. Was this a common no name? I'm just uh, not trying to get the real name, but was it a common name like Jimmy or Joe or no, something no. that would have been? <laughs> and, it wasn't his, and it wasn't his name. This is the name I actually used in the book. It was Henri. I'm okay, thinking, okay. Honor, Henri oh, means somebody. It's a negative. 
that's not even a name. I'm thinking, is that a French word? I know Henri is a characteristic someone wow, could have. Wow, that is but very Henri, odd. So that was interesting. And then I had another woman who, this was maybe a couple months later, I started going to a group of believers that was also pretty small. This was like 10 or less people. These people studied the Bible every night. <laughs> they were yeah. into missions work. We're, we're talking people who oh, really wow. practice what they preached. I'm not yeah. saying they're perfect. I don't worship anyone, but they practice what they preach. Right. They went around and helped the homeless. They worked with the yeah, poor. Yeah. They prayed. They yeah. met at a blind center up the street from my house. And uh, they had invited me to their house once when I was 17. And we did Bible study there. But the woman that claimed to have the gift of prophecy, and again, I'd read about, you know, these gifts in the Bible. So I thought maybe these are real. She said, the Lord is telling me to tell you something. And she started talking about an experience I would have later. Oh. that tied in with the UFO, but she didn't call it a UFO. She said, you're going to see these lights. And she told me how to interpret it almost. This is what oh. they are. She said, the enemy is watching and he knows that. And she went on and gave me a little talk. So remind you, this is when I was 17. So when oh. we cut to all these years later, uh, part of me when I'm sitting there watching it, thinking this is probably supernatural. Well, there's the self-fulfilling prophecy of maybe this is what she was talking about. Maybe Thank not. You. But then I started to see more of them close up in the backyard and the part that ties in is some of the shadow people is what we call them nowadays, the black entities. They didn't just show up when I was sleeping. <laughs> and I remember I wasn't doing alcohol or drugs. This was, I won't say the name of the place right. I work, but I was in a room at my place of work. And one of my very shy students, the student is an adult now. I won't use their name though. I don't say anything personally identifiable said, yeah. I see a spirit behind you. This is not a private school, mind you. And I'm thinking, this is weird. This is one of my quieter girls. She doesn't joke around. She's very well behaved. She told me that. And yeah. I couldn't talk about things of a spiritual nature, right. obviously, at work. So I said, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Now, cut to after she told me that, the students leave to go out. I turn to turn the light off. That was one of the girls. And earlier that day, one of the boys had pulled a huge cross out of his backpack and put it on the desk right by my cart. Wow. This wow. boy is also an adult. And I said, okay, we can't have that on the desk, sweetie. He said, you need to put it on your cart. I said, well, I can't do that because it's a public school. We need to make everybody feel welcome. Not everyone is of the same belief as those who, you know, think that that's important. So you can put it on your desk if you want. It was huge. <laughs> We're talking yeah. over a foot high. It was it wow, barely fit in his backpack. <laughs> so he plopped it on his desk and kind of smiled. So as we left, I saw a black figure come out of his desk. Whoa. I knew this wasn't normal. I'm just sitting there staring at it going, oh my gosh, I don't even know what this is. Not oh a float. I know what floaters are, but yeah. a fully embodied figure, a male wearing a yep. tuxedo, but black, semi-transparent. Mm -hmm. He walked through the wall. I just watched him walking, taking slow, methodical steps. He went through the wall into the south, which I did see one other in broad daylight many years later that also went to the south. I don't know why they like to walk through walls. But yeah. if a normal person, not that I'm not normal, a normal person who hadn't had any experience with reading the word of God had seen something like this, they would attribute it to maybe it's a ghost. Yes. Maybe it's maybe it's a spirit guide. Maybe it's an ancestral you know, visitor. Maybe if they're not into any particular religious worldview, maybe this is something from another dimension. We live in a complex universe. So yeah. I just watched it and thought, wow, this is this is interesting. It didn't try to talk to me. <laughs> I just yeah. watched it walk through. So having experiences like that, and my child also said that she saw a boy and girl figure like that during waking hours. So I prayed over her and ta taught her what I believe about these. Yes. Uh, having had experiences like that, it's easy for me to believe others when they talk about things they've seen, because I've seen things that are not natural. <laughs> They're not yes. normal. So yes. I thought I've got to write this down. I, I don't want to forget it. I'm already forgetful. <laughs> it's a struggle sometimes to remember, you know, what I ate for breakfast. But I decided I like writing. I'm going to start writing down what happened. I'll do it in the form of a story. So that's how I pinned the story. But it's based on a true story. So when you're reading, yes. read it as if you're reading something that happened. I took artistic license and added in some scenes to make it interesting. But you're reading wow. based on a true story. But what's really interesting, Dana, I know I'm taking over the talk here. <laughs> so feel free to interject yeah. at any time. Oh, is well, with okay. all, all the information that's coming out in the news about UFOs. And I know when I first began seeing them, I went to conferences. I met people and thought, I'm going to go get to know more. I traveled yes. down to down to Stephenville to see people, meet people that had seen the Stephenville lights, um, got to know quite a few people. 
sat down at a restaurant with people who, and not all the people that go to these conferences are believers in Christ. Some of them come from various worldviews. There are psychics, right. there are people from the new age, you know, the type of people that gather at MUFON meetings yes. and just want to, want to know more. The human yeah. mind causes us to seek. We're seekers. Yes. So, well, uh, a lot of people have saying. these experiences and they, they want to explain it. They don't understand it. And they, that they feel like by going around other people, they can maybe somehow rationalize what happened or, you know, what it really was. So exactly. I, I totally, I, that's what I did. I was going to conferences and trying to talk to other people and looking at their evidence. I mean, I was looking at the pictures. Right. And, and right. You're in, in pursuit of, of truth, so crazy. to speak. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're definitely not crazy. Trust me. Yeah. Now, back then, I heard someone tell a story about seeing this. I think that's really interesting. <laughs> what are they on? Yeah, but having right. seen it, I can't, I can't think the same way because I've experienced it up close and personal. But I find it interesting that there's so much in the news and there's a big almost debate amongst people about are these entities because the orbs yeah they're all everything's connected the yes. orbs the ufos they're all connected yes i've had experiences where i, I don't want to go into too much detail because i am a married woman yeah. and i don't share everything or every conflict yeah. that comes up in my marriage that's a natural part of being married yeah. but yeah. we'll say that when it started to lead me into a search of wanting to know more because i'm curious that kind of got me into trouble i looked into yeah. these more of course, I'm going to try to communicate with them, not yeah. necessarily talking, but I'm going to do some fun things and flash lights at them when they're hovering and see yes. if I can do some yes. communication or whatnot. But how, what's a tasteful way I can say this? When you're in that realm, you're dealing with the beings. Yes. They are always in support of anything that will lead you away from Christ. Yes. So if you're communicating with someone, you're married, say this is a male and you're married, you're not supposed to be talking to males secretly. If you yeah. send them a text, this is how deep and disturbing it would get. You send them a text, yeah. an orb will pop up in the sky. You send them another text, another orb will pop up. So you know that these are intelligent wow. beings, unless it's something in the phone that's connected to something from satellites. But you can't say that when the orbs have come close down yeah. and you've seen them shape shift and you've seen all this. So it gets um, into a realm where there's just so much speculation. Would it be fair <laughs> to say, I'm sorry, I, I just want to make sure would it be fair to say that what you're describing is that these experiences kind of correlated with sinful acts, but just oh, definitely, yeah. They you know what I mean? Away. Like if there's some, like if you were to do something, sometimes that's when these things pop up. You see up more. Or, You'll de yes. you will definitely see more. <laughs> it's I it's. Think you I, I got the to stop there. Right? I really do. I remember at one point I was considering because anyone who's a believer, they're human. Yeah. <laughs> they get to make choices. Yes, and. Right. I remember having a conversation with God and saying, well, this little thing I probably shouldn't be doing. I'm going to, I've decided I'm going to stop this. It's not something I should engage in. I had, yeah. I'd read enough of the word to know this is not something that God has for me. Right. Right. As soon as I'd made my mind up, this is, I'm done with this. I would see one. Wow. So there was like, almost like, a battle. Oh, like, like, well, gee, like, wait a minute. Like, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> like like the, well, here this, the sad part is it's almost more fun to do the wrong thing because you have more experiences when you're not doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. And for someone wow. like me, that is an, someone like me, that's an adventurer. I'm not going to yeah. necessarily do something that would hurt someone, but I'm thinking, wow, this is getting fun when I'm doing things that I don't need to be doing. And then that whole time I'm doing that, I'm not doing the things I should be doing, such as yeah. spending time with God. <laughs> But yeah. the biggest concern is that all of these groups teach, and I've met so many people from groups that have communication with the beings to yeah. the point where they have had auditory experiences. We're not talking about people that are schizophrenic. I've only had one. I don't yeah. know whether it was from something benevolent or malevolent. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. But the biggest thing is they all teach that you can access them through emptying your mind, meditation, emptying things out yes. and they yes. teach that you don't need christ you're not a sinner you're just a person on an adventure this life is a journey and we're all one which they're right we all are one but the yeah. danger in that is christ said he's the way the truth and the life so if you have a group of spirits which is what these are i've had enough experience with them to know yeah. that are telling you you don't need to worry about christ yeah. you don't have sin there's no such thing as sin it's just learning experiences well, if we have no sin, the truth is not in us. So it almost causes you to turn your back on anything that God has for you. Yeah. So that's where the danger lies. And it's not because, oh, I think it's a spirit because I can't understand what else it could be. 
I understand that when something comes out of nowhere, it could be anything, but it's when you start having experiences and you have the communication and it leads you in a certain direction, that's where you have to really wonder, gee, I'm told to test the spirits to see if they be from God. I've read these stories about Christ casting out spirits and there could be some orbs that could be, there were orbs in scripture that were angelic, but you have to be careful when you're listening to a being from outside of our dimension because they're not all good. And I know there are groups that yes. want us to think that Stephen Greer and E. Seti yes. want us to think they're all good, but that gets you into a danger zone where yes, you're refuting exactly what Christ said. And it's he's not really, a fear. That man is really wanting to communicate with them, you know, the way right. he started this was CE5 right. uh, research, you know, and communications. Right. He even has an app. Right. You know, right. you can, and you can how. communicate with them. You can yes. see them. And did I love what he, that? sorry. Did you do that? I'm sorry. Did you do that? I tried for fun and sometimes it would be effective, really? <laughs> but I also really? have that. There was also this, uh, there was a battle in my mind where I knew what's the verse. <laughs> he who was born of God cannot continue in sin. You can keep doing it, but it's so uncomfortable. Right. The whole time I'm thinking, I'm not supposed to be doing this. This is yes. not, this is against what the Holy Spirit is teaching me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yes. not supposed to be doing Paul this. Paul said that he, when he preached, he, I mean, he even said that uh, he tries to exactly. eat his flesh daily. So, I mean, that's, and that's Paul, what, you know, when exactly. he was, already, when he was, you know. The things I wish I could do, I don't. <laughs> and that which right. I, that holds the battle, it, right. right, the battle. Exactly. Because we are yeah. human and it is natural. We have yes. indul indulgences there. They're all very natural and yeah. normal. But Christ didn't teach to give into every little whim. We're free, but true. You, that's right. there comes a point where you hurt people. You <laughs> and when truly, you're hurting people, you that's a problem. You truly try to resist right. it. You truly daily. It, yeah. it is. It's a, it's a battle, you know. Yeah. And that's not, I don't, um, I'm not saying that, oh my gosh, you have to clean yourself up or you're destined. Christ paid for our sin completely. But yes. one of the offshoots of that, I know that because he paid for my sin, <laughs> if I do the things that are not pleasing to him, it's like I'm spitting on him. Yeah, well, and you did this for me, it so it's it's just just it's disrespect yeah. to him because he's already secured my place in heaven. We're That's redeemed, right. so why would I do that? It bothers you to do <laughs> right. it. Does. It bothers yeah. you. Yeah. So That's right. Yeah, it, it gets into an area that's very concerning. So I would say to anyone that has experiences with these, because I think more people will will experience them in time. It's going to come to a point, come to a head where it will be very commonplace for people to experience beings from the other dimension. Yeah. Um, my goal is to just plant that seed in their mind that you have to be careful because what you're dealing with is something that's been around much longer than you have. I'm not saying be afraid. It's not a fear mindset. It's more of a safe, keep yourself yes. safe yes. because we were already warned by Christ yes. about yes. how spirits would come and deceive. And if we don't pay attention to those words, it can alter our lives. We can make choices that can hurt others. We can lead yes. people away from truth. So it can be damaging to ourselves and others. It can leave a trail of destruction is one way to put it. So. Yeah, I was in church all my life and, and um, I love the Lord. And I, you know, I mean, I see miracles, real, you know, people getting healed and things like that. And I still getting involved in the occult. I ended up getting, you know, you can still like walking outside the boundaries and not realize that some people really don't. They don't understand it. And then that kind of leads into they become blind to it, where you can even tell them, say, look what the Bible says here. And they're like, eh, maybe that's just not for us. Maybe that's, you know, back then it was something different they were doing. That's what I kept thinking, that it was some different type of rituals they did, you know, when they right. were with spirits and all that. Right. But and here I am now trying to talk with spirits. Right. <laughs> you were into the ghost, realize, ghost hunting yeah. scene. So you had a lot of experience with you know, yeah. delving into that whole thing. And me having yeah. had the one auditory experience, I didn't talk much about that, but I was walking one day with my kids. This, I believe this was right after I'd seen the UFO. It's all kind of a muddle of events, I remember. But yeah. I was pushing, the, not walking with, but pushing the kids in the stroller. I had a vertical stroller. One sat yeah. in the front, one sat in the back. And we were at a mall nearby. And I saw a gentleman off in the distance. He looked different than everybody else. So I playfully in my mind asked are you an angel and kind of was just doing that oh i wonder if i could do something telepathic with him not expecting the guy to get up and answer you know and yeah. i heard an answer in not even from inside it was outside as clear as if someone were outside my ear speaking a beautiful voice and it literally shifted the whole atmosphere it sounded like his voice was water yeah i felt connected to i the best way to describe it would be it was someone who knew me better than i knew myself 
So yeah. at that point, I was like, that's not even that guy. Who is this that said this? And he just said three words. Yeah. I see you. Now, had I come at that experience without any knowledge of the fact that beings from the other side can communicate with us, but not ghosts, they're fallen angels and entities that are higher than us who rebelled against God, I wouldn't know what to call it. I mean, even now, I wonder, was that angelic? Was it demonic? I don't know. So we have to be careful because you cannot believe yeah. every spirit. Exactly. You can't just also, heed to every voice that you I, I believe that if with. God were to give you a message, I think it would be way more clear, something that you would know. Right. I don't He's think not the he author of confusion. Confused, you know? Right. He's he not the author of confusion. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, we'll take a break real quick and um, sure. and and we'll be right back. All right. Okay. Okay. guys uh we're back now and uh stacy was telling us about her testimony and some things that she experienced and i'm going to go ahead and let her finish she was saying okay and one of the other things i wanted to get into was after the first experience um some of the shifts that took place deception basically because i know firsthand i've always had the belief i should say not know that people should always be respectful because we can change our mind about topics Yes. I know I've changed my mind about many topics. And so I never try to make fun of people. I don't look down on people. I consider everybody yeah. equal because we're all human. We're all one. Yeah. We're all loved by God. He's pursuing every person. Yes, um, he, is. He, he knows us deep, more deeply than we do. Yeah. So when we're getting into issues that are gray areas, the whole UFO topic, UAPs, orbs, this is a very gray area. There's no one that can say definitively, okay, this is what it is. And I have a hundred percent proof. This is what it is. Right. Everyone from military personnel who are, you know, working from their script because their hands are tied. Sometimes they're told what to do or what to say. News media who are told what to say. People who have high levels of clearance who are told what they can release. Everyone's working from what they are told. Yes. So I think there's, is a common factor we all share and it's that we all are one in the sense that we're all made in the image of God and we're all here on earth together. Yeah. We're all loved. So I think if we come at the whole topic in a respectful way, I don't ever yes. make fun of this person that is doing it wrong. This, it's more of here yeah. is what's happening. Yes. And just like if my, one of my family members are my children, you're a mother too. So, you know, we always want what's best for our kids. Um, yeah. If my child were sitting in front of me right now and they said, I just saw a UFO, it told me to do this. <laughs> I wouldn't make fun of them. I would listen to what they said. Yeah. I would have a conversation. I would lay out very plainly, this is what Christ says about spirits because yes. they call them interdimensional beings. Yes. And I know one of the gentlemen that was interviewed said that we're in communication with non-human intelligences. That's yes. a pretty fair assessment because if you're not going to put any bias into it, it's non-human. Those of us yes. who have heard from that realm know they're not human and they're intelligent. Mm -hmm. But when you get a group that says 
they're coming in peace. We know they're coming in peace. We need to accept them. Put your, you know, put your weapons down. <laughs> Don't put a filter up. Don't be afraid of them. Don't worry. Yeah. To me, that would almost be like me telling my child, okay, if my child was still 15, I'm going to let you go to the mall. You can walk around and do what you want. Don't worry. You're good. Knowing that there are sex traffickers around, <laughs> knowing yeah. that there are people who could have bad intentions. If you really yeah. love someone, you tell them the truth. Yes. So yes. it's not that by going with my daughter, because I know when my kids were young, I would kind of follow them. <laughs> not follow, but yeah. if I took them to the mall, I'd be right there 50 meters behind watching, not thinking I could prevent <laughs> everything that happens. But I yes. thought that's if something's going to happen, it's not going to happen on my watch. I'm going to do my due yeah. diligence and try to control what I can control while I can. Yeah. But someone could say, you know, you're teaching your kids to be fearful by telling them there could be people out there watching. You're teaching them to be paranoid. You should just teach them that everyone, you know, we're all one. Yes, we're all humans here on Earth, but we're talking about intelligences that have have existed before us. And there's a narrative that existed before us. The yes. creator of life, life comes from life. If you look at biology, there is no scientist on the face of the Earth that can explain where life came from. Yeah, That doesn't mean that ancient you know, uh, worldviews who said, oh, thunder's happening because the thunder god made it happen, were in the know. But what yeah. I'm saying is life only comes from life. God That's has right. made himself known through the things he's created. That's the only right. way we have an apple is because it came from an apple tree. And when That's you get right. into, you know, macro evolution and micro evolution, I've taught science at a high enough level to know that there's a difference between macro and micro. Yes, things can yeah. change over time, but you're not going to see a dog changing into a bird. Exactly. Species don't change. Cats are going to have cat babies <laughs> humans right. are going to have human babies bacteria yeah. or viruses right viruses yeah. can lose receptors and not you know interact the same way with medicines and whatnot but life comes from life life has always existed so this is bigger than us yeah uh, when you talk about the force that created life he's always been here that's right always wow. so if we think outside of ourselves we've got us we're humans and then we have these beings that were around before us and most cultures teach that there are beings that were here before us, whether it's our ancestors that some try to communicate with, you know, there are religions where they speak to Orishas, the ancestors, the water spirits. There are Native American religions where they respect spirits of the air and spirits of this and the trees and whatnot. There's a knowledge in us of eternity. Eternity is written in our hearts. Life yeah. is kind of like the default. But we're mm. living in a fallen world and not everything here is perfect. If we were in a perfect place, then I could tell my kids, don't worry. There's nothing to worry about. It's yeah. all based on love. Love is in charge here. God is love, but there's another instrument yeah. it, he, going on here. I mean, we have free will. He could have made us robots. Yeah. But is that really love if you control every little facet of what someone's doing? Is that really love? Right. So he allowed us the freedom to do as we will. And doing as we will has consequences. So yes. when you get a class of beings who are older than us, more ancient than us, they're wiser than us. They can cloak in and out of this dimension at will. Here's the problem. They're wise. They've been here a while. But they know better. Just like if you look at a child molester, they know better. Yes. Those You're beings, wrong. they had more knowledge than us. They walked with, walked with God. Yeah. They not only knew him, they talked to him. And they still made the choice that they made to try to usurp him. Yes. And I'm not even going to fault them for that because we as humans make choices that aren't so great either. <laughs> so, right. I mean, when you think about it in terms of that, you have a class of beings here who made a choice. And there's a really interesting scripture that I think people don't really focus on that talks about we shall judge the angels. Yes. I, don't know what, I, don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I like yes. to play with those kinds of verses in my mind. Um, yes. But the non-human intelligences that they're talking about we cannot go around saying that they're all in our favor because if they were, what did Christ cast out of people? Exactly. Yeah. Amen. He wasn't casting out energy forms. He was casting out actual conscious beings that can apparently implant themselves inside our own temples. And try like to you can harm insert, us. Right. Just like you can insert a Nintendo cartridge into an old Nintendo. And yeah. They usually have the same effect on the person that they've inserted themselves into oppression. I mean, think about the guy that was influenced by fallen angels. He was suicidal. He cut himself. Yes, yes. He would scream out loudly. He was pretty much, if you looked yes. at like a bipolar type, he was 
not on the manic side, but on the depressive side where he was hurting himself and also hurting other people. He yeah. had superhuman strength. If you look at the girl who was influenced by spirits, I don't know that they had actually entered into her temple or they were just speaking to her from outside of it. She could tell the future of others in the scriptures. It says there was a girl who went around telling futures and when oh, wait, the, she spirit did was ca- oh, the spirit was cast out, that's yes, right. Denver, the spirit yes. was cast out of her. Yeah. Then she lost that ability suddenly. She could no longer you know what's tell the future. About that one? Sorry to butt in. Um, oh, no, no, please I, I find it. She was following the disciples and she was saying, you know, listen to these men. They are the way to salvation. They preach the way to salvation. So right. she was basically saying, yes, Jesus is the way. Because she was saying, listen to them. You know, they're telling you the truth. But Paul knew, wasn't it? It was Paul, right? Or was it Peter or Paul? I have to go back and <laughs> Hey, don't ask me. I'll go back and say it's Cinderella. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? I'm telling you, right? Let me, oh get, let me get my text evidence. Yeah, yeah. But um, but one of them was grieved because they knew that she was bringing her master's much money yeah, by yeah, Susan. Yeah. He knew that she had a spirit of divination by what she was doing, but she was following them. See, that's why I always wonder about that. People say, yeah, she couldn't have been safe. She had a spirit of divination. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, when you get into the whole, this person could have been, couldn't have been really. Yeah. God, God is for everyone, and he, yes, he has ways of reaching He's out people. To save so, all of us. Yeah. exactly. And even those that don't believe, I don't have, I don't have any negative thoughts about them because no. the only way you do believe is if God gives you faith. We're told, yeah. you, if you have faith, it's because He gave it to you. That's right. So I have compassion. Who are we to judge, right? Who are we to judge? This person does. This person doesn't. Maybe they haven't got what they need yet Uh to believe. I mean, we're Uh all brought in. If you think about Paul getting, or Saul at that time, getting knocked off the horse, and Christ had to basically encounter him in the form of a ball of light that flashed suddenly and said, why do you persecute me? But Uh I think all in all, uh, when you look at any instances of these non-human intelligences interacting with people, it's where they have knowledge that they shouldn't have. They have downloads and they have psychic information about people. They experience bouts of depression where they're hurting themselves. And, you know, there are hormones in our bodies and brains that can cause those kinds of feelings. It's not all spiritual. There are, we are machines. There are physical components in our body that can make us feel certain ways, a chemical concoction. But when you're dealing with non-human intelligences to say that they're all good to me that's not speaking the truth in love because you're not preparing people for reality that there are beings who have been around longer than us and christ talked to us about those beings yes she told us not to trust child molesters are very nice too (laughs) they're nice to the children (laughs) to get their way you know i mean it yeah. sounds terrible, but it, they are. They're always, there's always a way. But like you said before, I heard you say it. They're not going to come in the form that they really are. I mean, they're going to come and put a mask on or, you know, come in uh, in a form that people will accept. Right. You know, they're not going to come as they are. If in somebody ancient... was sitting there at a table with a little EVP recorder and they're sitting there trying to, you know, initiate a conversation, if they seen that spirit in its truest form, they're not going to sit there at a table with it in the dark, no less, right. <laughs> and talk to it. And it's like, and if we only knew what, we, you know, when I say we, I don't know if you did that or not, but if me, I know that if I would have known what the, what these spirits really were, I would have never, I wouldn't even took a chance <laughs> like that. Right. I mean, that was insane. Yeah. I mean, Think in ancient times, it. they came as gods in ancient times. Remember, there's there are verses about the someone coming from the sky. Even in the scriptures, it talks about how one of the men that were living in ancient times said, I saw her coming down from the sky. So spirit beings coming from the sky, they pose themselves as gods, goddesses, aliens, lots of different types. And one of the things that the enemy is really good at is sowing division, dividing people. Yes. He can't wait to yeah. divide. So you've got now the military right. complex is trying to make people afraid of the beings. And that's where they're getting their script from. Then we've got Stephen Greer trying to make people th- think the beings are all about love. So it gets yeah. to be a very confusing mess. Yeah, but yeah. I think that our goal is to make sure that we educate people. Not saying, you know, I know yes. it all. I'm not saying exactly, I'm better than people. Right. No one has omniscience. But yeah. as a caring individual, I'm giving the information I have that you need to be careful because spirits are real. I've yeah. seen them walking across a room. Yeah. They do have a will just like we do. They do have an agenda, just like I have an agenda when I'm wanting Taco Bell. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get my food and come home. And it would be naive 
to think otherwise because yes. Christ is the most important one who ever walked the face of the earth. He sacrificed himself so that we could all have that ticket to a blissful eternity that God had in mind for us when he created us. So when we do things that are completely against what Christ said, like trusting every spirit, because yes. he said, don't trust every spirit. There are spirits that are coming that will deceive. If it were, the whole world is going to be deceived, we're told. And if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. Right. You're right. So he has a way some of very that. interesting words there, but that's, yeah, that's pretty much yeah, all I, I like the topic for now. <laughs> Yeah, I like what you just said, where, you know, you can only tell people what happened to you, exactly. you know, and, and, and I'm the same way. I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak about the spirits that were, you know, in my life and how I got rid of them. And that was through Jesus and through it, not just by saying his name, like a magic wand that does right. work temporarily, but you know, they always come back if there's that open door or if I, I don't have that relationship with the Lord, that's not going to, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to get rid of them. I can't do it my own self. I'm not, we can't fight a, a, a spiritual battle physically. And right. it has to yeah. be the spirit. And the only spirit that can help us is Jesus. <laughs> right. At the same time, though, the whole, you know, we can't do it unless we're in a relationship. But if anyone asks him for help, he's coming to help. Yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> he's exactly. going to do, yeah. That, <laughs> Even if he uses person, it, he's going to come. Right. But if that, but if, uh, from what I have found, like when I, you know, did cases when I was a ghost hunter and everything, I would always hear that, you know, like even people that weren't believers and they would say, you know, and I said, in the name of Jesus, and it, it, it stopped. Well, then they would always end up calling me back. Well, guess what? It started up again last night. Move back. You know what I mean? A lot of times there's still that open door. They're not a believer. You know, well, sp also spirits, spirits are constantly around. They're in that second right. heaven, so to speak. So exactly. whether they right. choose to pop in or out, I kind of think it is. There's a guy walking down the street. He can come to my door and knock if he wants to. <laughs> yeah. Yes, now, right, right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he can knock. Did you ever have any... Um, uh, uh, when you did, because I noticed that when you said a while ago that you prayed to God and you says, you know, I just don't want no more to do with it. Okay. Did you, after that, start getting any attacks? Uh, that's a while back that that incident happened. We're talking over 10 years. <laughs> did yeah. I get attacks as far as like sleep paralysis? After you stopped, I wouldn't I to, you know, engage or, or, you know. I okay. Without saying too much, I won't even call them attacks. I'll say, I'll say okay. it was more, it was, how do I say this tastefully? <laughs> it was more seduction. Of... Yeah. <laughs> seduction. Okay. We'll put it plain and simple, simple. Right. So when I'm speaking about, okay, I know what I've seen. I have a few, a little bit of power here, Dana. We can always finish some other time. But when I say yeah. seduction, they don't always come oppressing. They can sometimes come with things that you would like attached. Yes. <laughs> They right. know what you like and they know yeah. how to serve it, how to give it to you quickly. People who are into manifestation know this, you know, speak yes. it, it becomes true, that kind of the whole new age thing. So yeah. it wasn't even in a scary way necessarily later, but if it ever did come in the form of sleep paralysis, yeah. and I did say, <clears throat> I would just say the blood of Jesus, I would say, you need to leave in the name of Jesus. They would leave instantly. They would dissipate. Okay. Now the scientific part of me says that could be psychological all going on in my brain. Right. But I know they left right away. <laughs> and yes. I know that there, there's always been the element of I have to make a choice when they offer. This sounds so crazy when I think about it because I'm a logical person. When something is offered to you in the spiritual realm, because I've had experiences where I will see things before they happen. Even when I was in elementary school, I remember I had a dream about an individual, a boy I'd never seen. And the next day he came to our school. So I thought that I, even back then I knew, okay, dreams, I know they're just stuff that happened in your head, but that was weird. And it happened a few times where yeah, I was like, this is really strange. So yeah, yeah that it, you have to be careful because or you know, there's something, something supernatural about it. So there's it definitely a supernatural well. realm right at play where, and when it takes on the point where things that are supernatural that happen in that realm suddenly manifest in our physical reality that's when you go oh okay now i know well, what's that going reminds on me about so, that incident that you I, that i heard you say before that where you was at a conference i believe and this lady that was talking you prayed mm -hmm. will you please tell the story right about that was that the, and i did write that into the book she was a psychic a self-professed psychic she made yes. a living off of telling people things that she shouldn't know about them. Her son was with her. I think he was probably in his thirties 
And I sat right across from her. I didn't eat the food there because I was worried they might put something in it. I'm like, I'm here at a UFO conference. I'm not eating anything that they have at this restaurant. That was just the paranoid part of me. Yes, you can pray for your food, but I'm going to go ahead and not eat right now. I'll let them eat. I don't know if they're putting DMT. I'm staying away from that. I don't do drugs. Right. But um, I just tried to be friendly and I sat across from her and I asked her to tell me about how her psychic abilities began. She told me the story about how she had some electric, uh, it was almost like a charge in the atmosphere that happened before she had a download. Oh, wow. But when she started speaking, as she was telling me the story, I'm praying in my mind, God, will you please reveal the truth of these events to her? And she just started coughing. She wasn't even drinking water. She's just sitting there talking to me. Now, I've been teaching before and I'm choking on saliva, but she was coughing profusely. Yes. Her son passed her in water. Do you need water? And then she's like, I, they don't want me to tell you anymore. And I hadn't said anything about being Christian at that point. I wasn't like openly talk. I was just there to listen to people's opinions at yes, that point. Yeah. But I thought that was really interesting. And then she went on to say, you know, I see a being behind you that's leathery. His name is, give me a name and this and that. And I thought, this is interesting. Did you say, behind me Satan or something? I did. And this was long ago. I did. <laughs> right. Get thee behind me. Yeah. So this, a lot of it I wrote into the book because I thought if I put it in there, maybe I'll remember it. That's working really well right now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's what I but thought I, was crazy when you said something about you, you pray and, and he's behind you, right? Behind yeah, I forgot about and then that. she said, there's a being right behind, behind you. you. And you're like, what? <laughs> and I'm not praying. That was insane. Lips, right? See, oh, my, my goodness. Mind. Nobody's omniscient. But no, there's a there's no. a verse that I love that says, I know nothing but Christ and him Amen. crucified and raised again. So if we're spreading the message that Christ has died, he paid yes, your ticket. Man. Anything you couldn't be forgiven for, you're forgiven right. for. It's a free gift. All you have to do yes. is open your arms and receive it. Amen. You know, you, you can believe you know, in you your heart. It was for you. Video. Confess you and you got it. <laughs> yes, you got a good video where you mentioned and you explained salvation. And Definitely. I love that it's video. Complete, we need, people need to know it's completely free. It's not who you are. It's what he did. So right. it's more of a the joyful revelation because yeah. we'll never be good enough. <laughs> he Amen. did it all. A hundred percent. So. That's right. right. Well, thank you so much, Dana. And... You. Yeah, really definitely. Has. I've been really wanting to bring you on and everything, but we're going to get that back together again. And uh, Joseph Jordan said that he will join us. So, well, that'd be great too. Perfect. So anyway, it was great talking to you, Stacey. And yes. I know that you have to go and everything because our time and then everything, but I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a blessing. It really has. Thank you so much. And since you'll probably air it on Father's Day, I will leave on this note. We all share the same father. <laughs> And he's yes. for Amen. all of us. And remember, Amen. light Amen. wins in the end. And God That's is light. Right. So Even he's God on your all side. The glory. Yes. yes. All right. All right. Thanks, God Dana. Bye-bye. Right. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode from start to finish. If you have any questions about the things we covered in the show or would like to follow my projects, please find me on YouTube and Facebook. I'll answer all messages. So don't hesitate to reach out. See you next time.